When an untrained beginner starts his journey towards selection, it doesn't require much training to improve. He can start with as little as two and a half hours per week of training, with three 30 minute runs and a few 30 minute strength training sessions, and he'll see great progress. To see improvement over time though, he'll have to continuously tweak different training variables to ensure his body is receiving a sufficient stimulus. For running, this could mean increasing the pace or duration of the runs, and for lifting, it could mean increasing the load or the number of reps and sets. But as a candidate becomes more advanced in his training journey, at some point it's no longer feasible to simply do more, either due to time or recovery constraints. Here's a few client examples, and the names have changed just for anonymity. Chris, who is a college student who works full time, is 21 years old and tells us that his progress has plateaued and he's training at his maximum allowable time of 12 hours per week. Any more time training and his sleep, school, or work would suffer, and that's not an option for him. He's not sure how to improve his training and he needs help. A second example is Ryan, who's a recent high school graduate living at home with his family with no current employment. He's currently training 16 hours per week and his progress has also plateaued. He feels consistently fatigued and has started to feel overuse injury symptoms in his knees and his shins from rocking twice per week. He's concerned that doing less will cause him to lose his progress and he's not sure where to go from here. These are two classic examples of when we would incorporate pre-fatigue strategies in our candidate's training. But before we do a deep dive on the practical applications, let's explain what pre-exhaustion is and how it can benefit a candidate's training, whether you want to go to BUDS to become a Navy SEAL, a PJ in the Air Force, or a Ranger or Green Beret in the Army. Pre-fatigue is a training strategy where we deliberately stimulate and fatigue target body parts prior to our main workout to elicit the same adaptations associated with a long training session earlier in the session. If that's confusing, here's an example. Let's use Ryan as an example and say that he rocks 15 miles with 45 pounds each Saturday. He knows that his rocking weaknesses are his legs and his lower back. By mile 10 in that 15 mile rock, his legs will become tight and heavy, which causes him to adjust his rocking position and consequently places more stress on his lower back. He's worked up to 15 mile rocks over time and he wants to maintain that mileage because he wants to break that 10 mile leg fatigue plateau and also work on his technique. But he also feels overtrained and feels overuse injuries coming up in his shins and his knees. The question is, how do we achieve the same training stimulus and allow for Ryan to practice his rucking form under fatigue with less recovery cost and total mileage so that he doesn't get injured? The answer is to pre-fatigue Ryan's weak points so that he enters that rock with more fatigue in his weak point body parts earlier in the session and thus needs to rock for less total time and accumulate less total fatigue and damage to the body. Because Ryan's weak points are his legs and his lower back, his pre-fatigue circuit may look like this. Three to four rounds of walking dumbbell lunges, air squats, dumbbell Romanian deadlifts, and back extensions. And while this might look easy when you're using light weights, after three to four rounds, Ryan will have a massive leg and lower back pump. And immediately following the circuit, he'll jump into a five mile rock instead of a 15 mile rock. But from the moment he sets off, Ryan's legs will feel like he's at mile nine or 10 because he's entering that rock in a fatigue state. Ryan can deliberately focus his energy on maintaining core tightness and postural integrity. And rather than rocking for 15 miles, he can simulate the same effects and benefits of a 15 mile rock with only five total miles. So now that we've gone through an example, what are the benefits of pre-fatigue? Number one is less total fatigue throughout the week. The main benefit that our clients share after using these techniques is that they no longer have to endure the significant recovery costs associated with weekly two hour or longer rocks or runs. Instead of performing these long rocks, most weeks we'll program a pre-exhaustion circuit followed by a 45 to 60 minute rock. And then every four to eight weeks, we'll drop that pre-fatigue circuit and have them complete a long rock as a diagnostic to measure progress and ensure they're psychologically comfortable with the long rock marches that they'll experience in their selection course. From a coach's perspective, we value pre-exhaustion because it allows candidates to be much more fresh going into their workouts following the pre-fatigue day. We find that a hard ruck march over 10 miles can require two to three days for the body to fully recover. But with pre-fatigue and a shorter ruck, 
Most guys feel leg and back soreness for a day or two, but they're still able to come back and hit a strength training session full force after a day of rest. It's still fatiguing, but there's a big difference between a pre-fatigue circuit plus a 45 minute ruck versus the deep full body fatigue you feel after a long heavy ruck march in the heat. And that's what we're avoiding, but we're getting a lot of the same benefits. Number two is lower risk of overuse injuries. Now some newer trainees may not be capable of rocking as fast, long, or hard as our advanced candidates, and so they may not see large differences in recovery costs by employing these pre-exhaustion techniques. But all trainees will experience the lower risk of overuse injuries, which comes with pre-fatigue training. The simple fact that candidates will spend less total time on their feet means a lower risk of shin splints and knee issues. The third benefit is less time training. Let's say that a candidate is able to comfortably recover from their training and does not feel symptoms of overuse injury or have a history of overuse injury, but they're in a time crunch. How does pre-fatigue benefit them? Well, let's use Ryan as an example. Prior to employing pre-fatigue training, he would perform a 50 pound ruck march for 15 miles at a 13 minute pace. That's a three hour and 15 minute ruck each week. Now, if Ryan employs the pre-exhaustion technique we discussed, he would do a 20-minute circuit followed by a 5-mile ruck march at a 13-minute pace. That's a total training time of an hour and 25 minutes and a total time savings of 1 hour and 15 minutes when compared to the 15-mile ruck march he used to do. So far, we've outlined the great benefits of pre-exhaustion training and why we like to use it with our clients, but who should leverage pre-exhaustion training and how frequently should it be used? With our candidates, we program pre-fatigue training if any of the criteria below is met. Number one is late intermediate or advanced trainee. Number two is if there's a history or risk of overuse injury with this candidate. Number three is if they have a limited time to train. And number four is if they're experiencing sustained fatigue or overtraining symptoms. Now let's discuss some practical recommendations on what activities to use pre-fatigue on. The main activities we stack with pre-exhaustion circuits are zone two runs and heavy rucks. Typically, that's one pre-fatigue leg circuit prior to our long run or ruck of the week, and this can be valuable regardless of how far out a candidate is from selection. The second scenario is pre-fatigue prior to a faster paced tempo run. As a candidate gets closer to selection, we will stack a general work capacity or calisthenics and grip circuit to ensure the candidate is comfortable and resilient enough to run at a fast pace under full body fatigue and in particular an upper body pump because that is something that candidates will experience regardless of the pipeline they're in whether it's SFAS, RASP, the Air Force Special Warfare Candidate course, BUDS, or Marine Selection courses. In closing, pre-fatigue is a valuable tool in any coach's or athlete's toolbox. It's a great way for advanced athletes or those in the time crunch to have a strong workout with less recovery cost, lower risk of injury, and less total training time. If you're looking to take your training to the next level, we offer plenty of free training programs. Check those out in the description below and the rest of our content on YouTube as well. And if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching where we directly target your weaknesses, we also offer that. If you enjoyed this video, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.